Hello kids, how are you? Hope all of you are fine by the grace of God. I wonder too if you have enrolled already for your online classes and some of you also might be already starting off with your homeschooling. Whatever it is, trust that the Lord has His best for you always. He always looks out for us. So join us kids for another time of learning. Hi Teacher Rainio. Hi Teacher Angel and hello kids. Thank you so much for joining us today once again for another time of learning and sharing and adventures only here on Kids Life. And to get us started, here is Matthew to open us in a word of prayer and let's get ready to also worship the Lord with our praise and worship group, the Machola Sisters. Hi Kid Lifers, how are you today? After all our amazing adventures and missions, hope you have started praying for your oikos and have also started to engage with the people God has placed in our heart. Let us also continue to grow in the Lord, okay? Join me now as we pray for our journey today, where we will meet Joshua and also encounter David in Psalm 34. So let us close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Bless each part of our kids' life. Use it to touch our learners, that my friends and I will continue to learn and grow in your word, that you will change us from the inside out, and that we will always glorify your name. Lord, Prepare our hearts now as we worship you. Thank you for our singing ambassadors who have not only prepared the songs, but will also lead us in the singing. Thank you so much, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Have fun. I'm just here with you all, joining you as we learn and grow in the Lord. Psalm 45, verse 8 to 9 says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and His mercy is over all that He has made. Indeed, God is good. He is always here for us, pouring out His awesome love and filling us with peace and joy that is beyond understanding. He is our great God. His love is eternal and beyond measure. Kid lifers, together, let us exalt our God and King. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. He is always there for us, He's good in every way. Pouring out His awesome love, He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, He's good in every way. Gives us all we need and more. He's good in every way. Come on now, join Come with me. Come on now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We gave Him everything. He's good in every way. He is always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out His awesome love, He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, He's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, join me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my 
king. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. Thank you, Matthew, for opening us in prayer. And thank you also to our singing ambassadors for being available to lead us in praise and worship. It's such a joy, right, Teacher Ariel, to be able to bless the Lord and worship Him because He deserves all our praise and honor. Yes. God is wonderful, faithful, and amazing how He takes care of us each day in the midst of these uncertainties and fears, especially with what we're experiencing now, the pandemic situation. By the way, little ones, how are you doing? Are you all ready to go on another exciting adventure with your teachers, Tina and Teacher Melu? Here they are. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to GCF Kids Like Little Ones. I'm Teacher Tina. I'm very happy to be uh, giving the lesson once again for you all this week. Um, I know we just got our announcement about the new level of quarantine, so it'll be a little while longer before we can meet again. But I'm praying for you guys, and hopefully we'll see each other again soon. In the meantime, I hope you guys are enjoying our time together. And for parents, are you subscribing to the YouTube or Facebook channel that uh, Teacher Angel has set up? Um, there's activity things uh, for each day of the week, so please uh, hit subscribe and follow that. This week, we're going to be talking about Joshua. Now, for my guys, do you guys remember how we talked about Moses and how he led the people through the desert and God gave Moses the Ten Commandments for the people? But then after Moses died, Joshua was told to lead the people of Israel. So all the people of Israel who were following Moses now needed to follow Joshua and do everything that Joshua told him because of what God tells Joshua to do. So today, in our Bible, we're going to read Joshua chapter 6. All right? So in Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites have just crossed over the Jordan, and they're, about, they're in the land of Canaan, and they're going to go to uh, the city of Jericho. Now, i got a picture for you today. Jericho. Whoops was a very big, large city with big, strong walls. Now, I don't know how good you guys are climbing, but could you climb that wall? No. Could you be able to go up it like Spider-Man? No. And then even if you got to the top, there were soldiers on the inside. And there was no way the Israelites could win this battle. But do you know who can win the battle for the Israelites? That's right. The Lord can. And the Lord said, Joshua, I have very, very specific instructions for you. And I want you to do exactly what I tell you to do. And when you do that, I am going to defeat Jericho for you. So, God told Joshua, all the priests are going to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant, that is where the Ten Commandments were. And a few, uh, and uh, some manna. And this is what the Lord had given to Israel, all right? And so, God told Joshua, the priests need to carry the Ark of the Covenant around the city and blow their horns. Do you see the horns they're blowing? It's almost like a kettlebell horn, okay? It was a horn of an animal, and it would be kind of like a trumpet, and they would blow through it and make a loud noise. And then the soldiers, they would march behind. Do you see them? Now, the soldiers, they got their spears and their shields and their helmets, but are they fighting? No. Are they blowing any horns? No. They just marched behind because God was going to win the battle for them. But it's very big and very scary. So this is what God told Joshua. God says, Joshua, on day one, you're going to take the priests and the Ark of the Covenant and the soldiers and march around Jericho one time. And nobody makes any noise except for the priests who blow the trumpet. So day one, everybody came out and they marched around the entire city. And then they went home. And then on day two, guess what they did? They came out and they marched around the entire city. And the soldiers were quiet and the priests blew their horn. And they marched around the city one time. And then on day three, 
You can guess what they did. They marched around the entire city and the soldiers were quiet and the priests blew their trumpets. What do you think they did on day four? How many times do you think they went around the, the city of Jericho? One time. And then on day five, how many times did they go around the city? One time. And then on day six, how many times do you think they went around the city? One time. That's right. But then God said to Joshua, on day seven, day seven is going to be different. You're going to march around the city seven times. And the priests are going to blow the trumpets. And the soldiers are going to be quiet. It's day seven. Everybody got up. And the priests, they got ready and they blew their horns. And this time they marched around the city seven times. Ikot ni ikot. And around and around and around. And as they came around for the very last time, on the seventh time, the soldiers and the priests and everybody shouted and made a great big noise. And do you know what happened? The Lord destroyed the walls of Jericho and they came falling down. All of those big, thick cement and stone and brick just all came tumbling down. Did the soldiers do anything to win that battle? No. The Lord did everything. Right? All they had to do was obey the Lord in every little thing. All right? So how can that help us today? Is there something that's going on in your life that's really, really hard or really scary? I know there is in my life, and it's probably the same thing. You're probably really tired of being stuck at home. You're really, really, really tired of not going anywhere, not seeing your friends, and it's hard, right? But we, we read in our Bible that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts and our minds, and we are to obey the Lord. And so what is God telling us to do to obey him? Even though life is so, so hard right now, can God help us even though it's really hard? Yes, because if God can take down the walls of Jericho for the soldiers and the priests, can God help you today even though life is really, really hard? Yes, yes, he can. So when we pray to the Lord and we say, Lord, help me to obey mommy and daddy. Lord, help me to love you with all my heart and my soul. Lord, help me to obey all you want me to do. Will God help you do that? Yes. Because God is more powerful than anything in the whole world because he made the world. He is God. All right? So I want you guys to remember that. God will do the battle for us. Even though things are hard, he will help us because he can, even though we can't. All right, so let's talk about our memory verse. Our memory verse is found in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. All right, and I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation to make it a little bit easier. It says, You must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirements, decrees, regulations, and commandments. That's four things. Wow. All right, so let's talk about our verse. It says, you must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirements, his decrees, regulations, and commandments. Okay? So we've read in God's word. Remember, he gave us the Ten Commandments. Okay, those are the commands. And it says, oh, what does the Lord require of you? Right? But to walk humbly before our God. Right? And God has said, obey your mother and your father. So there's some decrees. And it says, if you obey the Lord, your God, you will have long life. So that's the regulation, all right? So everything God tells us to do in his word, we are to do it, all right? Because that is love. God says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So we will read our Bible and we will learn what God wants us to do. And we will show him that we love him by obeying his word, all right? So let's practice our memory verse and let's come up with some actions for it. All right? So that's easy. You, or should we say you? Let's do it this way. You must love, right? Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Lord, you're God. So you, or you can do this way. Take your pick. I'm going to point to Teacher Tina because I need to remember this. You must love the Lord your God and always obey. What should we do for always obey? How about this? Always. You hold your fist like this, like really tight. Always, always, always. All right? So we'll say always obey. All right? So let's practice that. You must love 
the Lord your God and always obey. And then let's just grab our Bible. You, if you have a Bible, you can grab your Bible or you can hold your hands like you're holding your Bible. All right. Because in that Bible is everything. All right. So let's practice that. You must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirements, decrees, regulation, and commands. We'll practice it one more time and I'll just use my hands. Ready? Deuteronomy 11, 1. Okay. You must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirements, decrees, regulations, and commands. De Deuteronomy 11, 1. All right, can you guys practice that? And then one day when we finally get together again, we can practice our memory verses together and see how many we can remember. All right? I hope you all have enjoyed our lesson and our story today. And I hope that you are reading your Bible and praying every day so that you can grow in the Lord and we can talk about it when we see each other. But for now, Teacher May is going to do crafts with you. Because you know Teacher May is very, very good in crafts. So she's going to help you do a really fun craft for you today. Okay? Let's pray, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, I would just pray for each and every one who is watching that they would be able to read your word, Lord, and know that no matter what happens in life, you can take the battle for us, Lord. You can do anything. And that we can just trust in you, Lord, so that we must obey you even when things are hard. Lord, I just pray that you would give us all safety as we continue in this quarantine life. Help us to love one another as we should. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye for now. Hi, kids. Welcome to Kids Life. My name is Teacher May, and with me is my son, Miguel, who will help me do the craft today. So for today, we're going to make a trumpet same as what God commanded Joshua to use from the Bible story. So are you ready? Let's begin. Our craft for today is Joshua's trumpet. Here are the materials that we're going to use. One tissue paper roll. Colored papers. Scotch tape or glue Pencil Pair of scissors And a ruler First, fold your colored paper into a half horizontally Then, fold your paper again into half but this time, vertically. You could always ask mommy and daddy to help you if you cannot do it by your own. Then, using a pencil, put your tissue paper roll in your colored paper and mark its height. This is going to be the long part of your trumpet. Make a straight line vertically from your marker towards the end of your colored paper. Then, just like a funnel shape, from your marker, make a slanting line going to the tip of your colored paper. Your lines should look like this. Now using a pair of scissors, it's time to cut those lines. Make sure to ask assistance from your mommy or your daddy if you don't know how to cut yet by yourselves. Your pattern should look like this. Make sure you have two patterns. Attach the long part of your pattern in your tissue paper roll using the glue. Do the same on the second pattern. Then combine the rest of the pattern using glue. Your trumpet now should look like this.
Then from another colored paper, make 3 circles using 1 peso coin. Now it's time to stick those 3 circles in your trumpet. 1, 2, 3! So there you have it, your own Joshua's trumpet. Good job, Miguel! Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed doing the craft. Remember kids to always praise God each day. And when you're well or safe, always thank God. But for some of you who are sick right now or just having a hard time, just continue praying and obey God. Our Bible point for today is, when life is hard, keep obeying God. And our memory verse that's taken from Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1, Love the Lord your God and keep His requirements, His decrees, His laws, and His commands. Bye! See you again soon! God bless! Thank you so much, Teacher Ikina, for our Bible story on Joshua and Teacher Melu for our crafts. And also to Miguel. Miguel also helped her out. So little ones, enjoy making that trumpet, alright? With your mom or with your dad or with your siblings. And together, let us always worship the Lord in all that we do. And from that, we move to another kid lifer and super ambassador for Christ, Anna Lilia. And she invites you kids fellow kid lifers to work on something with her, okay? So watch these kids. Hi kid lifers! My name is Anna Bilia and I would like to invite you to keep on watching Kids Life every Sunday at 1 p.m. Next, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and then share the link with your friends and your relatives that the Lord wants you to reach out to. Do you remember our Super Ambassador segment? We talked about reaching our Oikos, so let's get started. Let's not waste any time. The Lord will help us too. Next, please like our videos because the content there is amazing. And lastly, please write to our teachers at our Kids Life Messenger or at our email at gcfchildrensministry365 at gmail.com. What have you been learning? What lessons have encouraged you? How can we pray for you? We would love to pray for you because we care. God bless you. See you soon. Thank you, Anna, for that invite. Yes, kids, let's do that, okay? Let us share the link of our official YouTube channel to other kids so that they too can take part and also join us here on our Kids Live channel. So how do you do that? Well, as you can see down there, right again, in our video, there's a button called Share, right? So make sure to share our link and make sure to subscribe also to our YouTube channel, okay? So that together, we can grow as a family and we can learn more about God. That's right, Teacher Radio. Also, kids, don't forget to join and sign up in certain parts that you can participate on Kids Life. Like, for example, Scripture Reading, taglines, opening prayer, closing prayer, or even sign up for a special number. I'm going to be posting this on our page, Kids Life page, and also in your parents' Viber chat room, so that they can work with you on this. We are very excited. We would really want you to get involved, and we would want that you be able to use your skills and talents that the Lord has given you. Even uh, besides, you know, studying the Word of God, besides growing in Him, we also get to serve Him. Right, Jerino? So can you promise that, kids, that you will not forget this this week? This is your assignment, okay? Indeed, that's a very wonderful opportunity for you kids to be involved in serving the Lord with us here on our GCF Kids Life Children's Ministry. And we look forward to working with you and serving with you. That's right. And also, there is more, kids. We are actually thinking, Teacher Radio, of having a feature right up of each one of you, you know? So, uh, of getting, you know, getting 
your friends and people to know what the kid lifer is, right? And so, pray for us as we work on this. It's so exciting. It's getting exciting. Today. Yeah, indeed. It's getting very, very exciting. And now, let's have Jace, another wonderful kid lifer, to share our scripture reading for today. Hello Kid Lifers! So good to see all of you again. Hope you are doing fine with the help of the Lord as you join me as I read today's scripture that is taken from Psalm 34 verses 1 to 10. I will be reading from the English Standard Version. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord and lack no good thing. God bless the reading of His Word. Enjoy learning now. Do get ready for your journal and also your markers. Thank you, Jace, for helping us out with our scripture reading today. So kids, get your markers now as we start our marking on our Bibles, or you can have a printout also of the passage today so that, you know, you can take time later on to transfer it to your Bible. Okay, so let's go kids. Okay kids, so we are pretty excited. You could see it on your screen right now with those beautiful background and these and all. Thank you so much to Harry who helped us with the background for our PowerPoint, okay? So we are going to study today Psalm 34 verses 1 to 10. This is part 1 of Psalm 34. Okay, so we begin our markings with verse 1. We have their eyes, so we put a blue circle around it. And then bless, we have a smiley face. And then Lord, a purple triangle. Times, the clock, this is the clock in our background. And then is a purple triangle pertaining to God. And then praise, we have those hands, you know, that praises God. And then continually is also a time phrase. So we put a clock there. Me in my mouth. And then in verse 2, is me and circle, blue circle for the word my. And then Lord with a purple triangle. And then here for here. And be glad, happy things. Okay. And then in verse 3, we also mark the word magnify with those two hands lifted up. We also mark the Lord with a purple triangle. We mark me, referring to David, with a blue circle. Then we also mark us with a box, green box. Exalt with the two hands in the air. His name with a purple triangle. And together with a green box. For verse 4, we mark I with a blue circle. For verse 4, we mark I with a blue circle. We mark salt with the two eyes looking to the left. Or just put eyes. And then the Lord with a purple triangle, He with a purple triangle, Me with a blue circle, Delivered with a pink underline, and My with a blue circle. Okay, and then in verse 5, those we will mark it with a green box who look to Him with a purple triangle. And then radiant, you have those rays, right? That talks about radiant. And then you remember radiant rocco. And there, with a green box, faces, so never be ashamed. Then we go to verse 6, man, poor man, with a blue circle. 
Lord with a purple triangle, him with a blue circle, him again with a blue circle, and his with a blue circle. And in verse 7, we mark the Lord with a triangle. We also mark him, who is referring to the Lord, the triangle, purple triangle. We mark the word them with a green box. In verse 8, we mark taste with this emoji. So it's an emoji that's about to eat. Yeah. And then C, uh, we mark it with eyes. And then the Lord with a purple triangle, man with a green box, and him with a purple triangle. Yes, and we now down to verse 9 and verse 10. So in verse 9, we look at the word Lord, which mark it with a purple triangle, is in another purple triangle, him with a purple triangle. And then in verse 10, seek, we put our actual eyes there, and then Lord with a purple triangle. So isn't that fun, kids? Each Sunday, you get to mark this. And don't forget, on Tuesdays, we will post this so you can have a review also of what we have just taken up to do. Okay? Right, and the reason why we mark our text is so that we understand what we are reading, what we're studying, and it's, uh, it's for us to slow down, right, so that we get the focus on what are the things that are repeated here, what are the ideas that the writer wants us to know. Because sometimes when we read our Bible, we just run through it and just read one chapter or a few verses. But when we mark, we get to slow down and we get to understand, yes. oh, this is what this, this verse is trying to say. So let's head on to our lesson! Yay! So kids, it's now time for us to study scripture together. And I have the privilege of sharing this psalm with you. It's Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 to 10. So as you notice, we're only going to be discussing the first 10 verses. And next week, we will discuss verses 11 up to the very end of the chapter. Okay, so this is part one of Psalm 34. So get your Bibles with me and your markers and of course your journals. Because why? This is a very important psalm and you can take down notes if you learn something new. Or maybe you have questions, you can write them down there as well. So let's get started. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Okay, so we see that David starts off by saying, I will bless the Lord at all all times. So question, when are we supposed to bless the Lord? It says, at all times. times. But maybe you have a question. So what does bless mean? I'll be sharing with you the Greek word of the word bless. Now in the Greek, bless is called barak, okay, or barak, okay, and which means to kneel down, to bless, or to thank. So when David says, I will bless the Lord at all times, he's saying, I will kneel down before the Lord, I will thank the Lord at all times. And then he says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So what do we learn here? David is talking about worship, about thanking the Lord, about expressing gratitude to the Lord at all times, right? And he's going to use yeah. his mouth, right? God's praise will always be in the mouth of David, okay? So what do we learn here? We understand that, you know, life is not always going to be easy. There are always going to be moments where we're afraid, we're worried, right? But David says, Lord, I will bless you at all times. Mm -hmm. Now that is faith, right? To that's be able right. to thank the Lord and to worship Him even with all that's going on, right? And I like that David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, times right? So whether we're down mm -hmm. or sad, we will still give thanks to the Lord. Right. That should be your attitude. Just like what David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will kneel down and thank Him, right? When the day starts, do you thank the Lord? Do you thank Him for giving you a new day, for giving you air to breathe, for giving you food, right? We can thank the Lord for many things. And then at the end of the day, you can also thank God. Lord, thank you for today. You know what? Today wasn't really um, awesome, but I still thank you because I'm alive. I thank you, Lord, because I have my family, I have friends, I have you, right? We should always count our blessings. That's what it means to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will thank the Lord at all times. So let that be the attitude of our hearts, right? Now in verse 2, you see verses 1 to 3 are connected. We'll see that later. In verse 2, it says, My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Okay, so what is David saying here? He says, My soul will make its boast in the Lord. Okay, now usually when we say boast, 
Boast has a negative connotation, right? Boast is like, you know, in Tagalog, it's mayabang, to be proud, right? Or to be boastful. But in this verse, David is saying, I am going to thank the Lord. The idea of thanking the Lord is carried on into this verse. In verse 2, my soul makes its boast in the Lord, right? Mm-hmm. You know when you're overwhelmed with so yeah. much joy and it just um, runs out from who you are, right? It's an overflow, mm-hmm. right? And that's what it's saying here. My soul will boast in the Lord. Lord, thank you. To God be the glory, right? Yes, Praise that's God. Totally, yeah. That's what it means in verse 2. Mm-hmm. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. So David is telling other people, hey, this is what happened to me. This is what God did to me, right? So that's another way that we can tell other people about God, right? Mm-hmm. That's another way for us to to bless the Lord, right? To to honor His name is when we share to others, what did the Lord do for you? Did the Lord protect you? Did the Lord provide for you, right? So we always have to worship and thank God. Lord, thank you. Without you, I am nothing, right? And in verse 3, we understand that verses 1 to 3 are connected. Why? What does verse 3 say? It says, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Okay? So verses 1 to 3, if you were to group them, this is the worship verses. Okay? It's talking about worshiping the Lord, giving thanks to Him, honoring Him. Verse 3 says, O magnify the Lord with me. Teacher Angel, what does magnify mean? In it? Oh, magnify also is related to glorifying God, mm-hmm. praising God, right? Mm-hmm. Exalting God. Right. They all work together. Right. And the Greek word for magnify is gadal, which means to make greater, to mm-hmm. lift up, or to boast about the Lord. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when David says magnify the Lord, Lord, I want your name to be known. I right? want your name to be praised. Yes. Right? I want to glorify you, Lord. Right. For God's glory. Right. Because right? when we magnify something with a magnifying glass, right, we look and it becomes bigger. And that's mm-hmm. the same idea here. David wants the name of the Lord to be made bigger for other people to know more about who God is. Right. Mm-hmm. And this time, notice, David is inviting people to worship the Lord with him. Mm-hmm. Right. It says, what does it say there? Magnify the Lord with me and mm-hmm. let us exalt his name together. together. Right. So it, it reminds you of church. Right. It reminds yes. you of, of Sunday school. Right. We can't do that right now because of the pandemic mm-hmm. but you know what we can still worship the lord even like in our we home did a while ago when yes. we opened in, in a worship and praise time right? right we can still worship the lord even in our homes so notice in verse one david said i will bless the lord mm-hmm. and then in verse three he's saying magnify the lord with me see you see that mm-hmm. at first he's it's his personal worship and then in verse three he's calling everyone let's worship the lord together mm-hmm. so what do we learn we are called to worship the God. Yes. We are called to worship God. Yes. And you're called to honor His name. And, you know, we see that um, part of our worship is to be together. Yes. Corporate worship, right? We can't do that now because of the pandemic. But online, we can still continue that. We can that. still do that because we are still a church. Mm-hmm. We're still a body of Christ. And wherever God has placed us in our own homes, we can still worship together, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, nothing can separate us from our love for God and our time of worship and praise when we spend with Him. Right. Right. Now let's move on to verse 4. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Okay, so what did the Lord do for David in verse 4? It says, God answered David. But what did David do first? David sought the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, to seek the Lord means to pray to him, Mm -hmm. to draw near. Right? So what David did first is... He looked for the Lord. Right. He looked for the Lord. He went Mm -hmm. to God and said, God, this is what I'm going through. This is my problem. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord do? God answered. So what do we see here? Mm -hmm. God answers us. Yes, He answers our prayers and He's waiting for us, right? Instead of us running to someone and telling Mm -hmm. that person about our problem, they should be like secondhand, but the first one that we should run to and look for should always be the Lord. Right. And He will answer us. And sometimes the way God answers us is like there's that peace Mm -hmm. that will be in our hearts Mm -hmm. or there's that comfort, Mm -hmm. right? And we are assured 
that he will take care of us. Right. right, and it says that he delivered David from all of his fears. Now notice the word all. It's not okay. just some, but it's all of his fears. And we see here the privilege that we have as children of God, that we can draw near to God, mm -hmm. right? We have that privilege that we can um, talk to Him, and God will answer us, right? That is such a gift and a blessing. And we see here that when we go to God, God will help us mm -hmm. and deliver us from our problem. Now, let us be reminded that sometimes God doesn't answer right away, mm -hmm. right? But take heart because He does and He will answer us. All and right? just to add to mm -hmm. you God always has His best Yes. Right for us. He's always looking out for us. Right. He always wants the best for us. Mm -hmm. So even when He doesn't answer, it doesn't mean to say that, you know, the, the Lord doesn't care about what's happening to us. But He will see us. He will deliver us. Mm -hmm. Because it says there in verse 4, David was able to testify that, and delivered me, David said, from all my fears. So David actually went to the Lord when he was so afraid because this was the time when he had a lot of enemies that were after him. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Lord to help him, right? right? And what did the Lord do? The Lord delivered him from all his fears right. and protected him from his enemies. Right. And in verse 5, we see that those who look to the Lord are radiant mm -hmm. and their faces shall never be ashamed. So this verse is telling us that we have a connection to God, right? Mm -hmm. When we look to the Lord, the Lord is our hope, mm -hmm. right? The word radiant is used here. Now, when you look at the sun, right? Don't don't look at the sun. But when you look at the sun, yeah. it's too bright, right? And it gives you that sense of warmth. So when we look to the Lord, we are filled with that warmth, yes. right? We have that hope from God that mm -hmm. everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. And it says, their faces shall never be ashamed. Now, mm -hmm. we have a connection to God. We can just draw near to God as to how we are, right? We don't need to pretend, right? We can mm -hmm. just be honest. Lord, this is what I'm feeling. Lord, this is my problem, right? The promise here is when we look to Him, we will be radiant. We will be filled with hope. We'll be yes. filled with joy. I just like to imagine this, but not actually imagine, but we have kind of experienced this. I noticed, teacher, you know, when we are really with the Lord, and we are so in love with the Lord. We love Him. We praise Him. We spend time with Him. The radiance here also could mean like, you know, there's that the inner joy that just fills us up, that even mm -hmm. is seen in our faces, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That when people look at us, they would be wondering, how come this person is full of joy, that, that even the face says it all, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because we are shining the the love of God, the light of the Lord just shines through right. us, right? And so we, this is another way also of saying, right? In their faces, we will, you know, there's that brightness because of the Lord. And there is that hope that lights us up, right? The radiance in our face, right. the beauty of that faith that we have in the Lord. Now let's go to verse 6. Verse 6 says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Again, the word all yes. is mentioned there. So it's not just some of his troubles, but it's all, all of his troubles, his troubles. Right? So what happened to David? David describes himself as a poor man, a poor man who cried to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? The Lord heard him, right? Does that look familiar? Mm -hmm. It looks to me like verse 4, mm -hmm. right? David said in verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. And then in mm -hmm. verse 6, he says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And what mm -hmm. did God do? God saved him out of all his of his troubles. troubles. Just like in verse 4, the Lord delivered him of all his fears, right? And teacher, you know, this is all so familiar. If you kid like first remember the lesson we had last Sunday, it talked about, remember, we talked about Paul and his experience when he was, you know, he went through a lot of trials and sufferings. But then he was able to say it to Timothy that the Lord rescued him from all of the sufferings that he went through, the Lord rescued him. And here we see David saying the same, that the Lord saved him out of all the troubles and delivered him from all his fears. 
right? So isn't this amazing? Right, and we see here that we have a God who cares about us, mm -hmm. right? So when we have a problem, we can run to the Lord, and it's sure that He will deliver us and save us. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 7 carries the same idea. Verse mm -hmm. 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and delivers them. Now, verse 7 reminds me that we are in a spiritual battle, right? We are, um, the enemy or the devil is always trying to tempt us or to uh, discourage us, right? Mm -hmm. But verse 7 tells us that the angel of the Lord encamps or watches over those who fear the Lord. He watches mm -hmm. over us, right? And what? Delivers us also from evil, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a God who protects us and cares about us, right? This is a spiritual yes. battle, right? That's true. And uh, the angel of the Lord encamps also is he, they are, he puts his surroundings around us, right? Just like in Psalm 91 also. It's very, if you go to Psalm 91 and you look at it, uh, it's very familiar also. It's very similar rather. And uh, it talks about the Lord's protection. So the Lord really protects his children. And in Psalm 91, he even protects us from all those deadly diseases and all those pestilence, right? And here, it was about protecting him from his enemies that were about to attack him. Right. And now in verse 8, we understand what David is trying to tell us. Verse 8 could be one of the main verses of Psalm mm -hmm. 34. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So David is saying, that the Lord is good, right? Yeah. God is always going to be good. And David says, taste and see. So he's telling us, believers, notice, realize, perceive that God is good and he's always going to be good, right? Because yeah. why? Remember, God delivered David from his troubles. God helped him. God comforted him. And so David is telling us, God is good. Taste and see, right? When your parents tell you to taste and see like a particular food, Sometimes at first you're hesitant to try it because you don't know how it tastes like, right? Mm. So when you see it, sometimes the food looks appetizing, but you're not so sure about the taste, right? It's or only it when be the other way around, right? Or sometimes when you when you um, taste the food, sometimes it doesn't look like it's it's good, mm. right? But the idea here is God is good, and we can experience that. We can realize that God is indeed good, right? When we look back in our life, in our experiences. God has always been good. God has always been comforting us and helping us and pushing us forward in the way that we should go, right? And when we look back, we realize, oh, God always had our best interests. God always wanted what was good for us, right? And the promise here is we are blessed. We will be happy. We will be joyful when we take our refuge in our God who is good, right? To take refuge means to dwell, to remain in the Lord. So when you stay in the Lord, there is that blessedness, there is that joy, that happiness that abounds and overflows. That was beautiful. That's right, Teacher Rangel. I agree with you on what you said. Verse 9 and verse 10 are related to each other, okay? That's going to be the last verses that we're going to be studying. In verse 9, it says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack so david now is talking to us christians he's saying fear the lord you his saints so did you know that we are saints did you know that did you know that we are saints yes david calls us saints here in verse 9 mm -hmm. he says fear the lord you his saints now saints in the greek means hagios which means set apart set or apart, to be yes. holy right and david is telling us fear the lord fear the lord believers Fear the Lord, but honor we Him. Have set apart. Right. We have to fear Him. We have to live for Him. Right. And what's the promise? When we fear the Lord, when we honor Him, when we bless His name, mm -hmm. what's the promise here? Those who fear Him have no, no lack. lack. Right. And it's similar to what we learned in Psalm 23. Right. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, not want. want. Right. Carries it's, the same idea. That's true. It's like the Lord is, He's the one that will complete us. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And in verse 10, it's a similar idea again. He, David this time talks about the young lions. Now, what about the young lions? The young lions suffer want and hunger. So I imagine that young lions are easily hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Just like many of us are hungry, right? Yeah. We easily get hungry. 
And um, but this time David is telling us that even they may be hungry, but if we seek the Lord, what does it say? We lack no, no good thing. thing. So why why exactly is David talking about lions? Now if if you know or if you watch Nat Geographic or different kinds of uh, animal shows, you understand that lions, right? Their parents take care of them. Their parents are supposed to be feeding them. That's the role of the older lions, the parent lions, mm-hmm. to their younger lions, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, for some strange reason, even these lions, sometimes they can forget to feed their children, right? Mm-hmm. Or they um, do not have food with them, right? Maybe because it's drought or maybe it's because they, they can't find a certain mm-hmm. animal to hunt. Right? Mm-hmm. But what's the reminder here for us in verse 10? Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Mm-hmm. Right? We have a God who provides for us. Right? He mm-hmm. provides everything that we need. And as Teacher Angel said earlier, mm-hmm. it's the Lord who completes us. That's it's right. the Lord who gives us purpose in this life. Another way of saying verse 10 is um, God is our everything. Right? And if God is our everything, we don't need anything else. Of course, we still need food, mm-hmm. right, and water and all those things. But verse 10 is all about spiritual needs, right? When we have God, we are made complete. We are made That's whole. True. We will not be looking for other things apart from God because God mm-hmm. is our life. God is our everything. And it goes back to the idea of David in verse 8 that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And I'm sure Teacher Rangel at this time, you know, this lesson actually is very timely. And I just wanted to encourage you young kid lifers, just uh, the Lord wants to encourage you through this lesson and Teacher Rangel was very good, a good uh, points there. That, you know, you may be going through something right now. You may be discouraged, you may be anxious about not being able to go out because you are used to going out to the malls. And not only that, but even, you know, to going to places, recreational places, or even going to school. And now everything is at a standstill, you know, and you're you're going to do your lessons now online. And there is no guarantee if you have a better internet. Or maybe some of you even would stop going to school online even and do the homeschooling already. Because of the tuition fees and all those things. But my but kids, we'd like to let you know that again, God will provide. He will take care of all your needs. And please, if you think uh, if you if you're watching now and you're listening to this, and you see your parents are also going through a hard time, don't forget to at this at the end of this lesson. To go up to them and encourage them, remind them that, that mom, don't worry, the Lord will provide, right? Because there will never be a day that we will go hungry. Yes, we hear of a lot of people out there that are hungry and are suffering. The Lord wants us to pray for them and if we have extra to help them. And in the same manner, the Lord also wants you to know that what you're going through now, it's not going to be forever. The Lord will give you His grace and strength to encourage you, to help you as you go on, right? Because this is, I mean, this is already like we're applying already what we're learning. And this is for you. That's why we study God's Word. We do our observations, the discussion, and now we are talking about how we're going to live this, right? So what do you learn today, kids? It is our prayer, your teacher Angel and I and your other teachers, that you will live God, live out God's word. You will remember this, that the Lord is worthy to be praised, that the Lord can be trusted, we can take Him at His word, because He will see us too. Because He loves us, He cares about us, He will deliver us. So, Remember that all these kids. So, Teacher Rino, that was a beautiful insight, very timely lesson. And kids, we hope you got, you were encouraged and blessed. And uh, now we move to our memory verse. But before our memory verse, let us remember this is our main Bible point or our takeaway for today's lesson, right? And the Bible point is. 
the Lord deserves our praise, right? Because He is good and faithful. So again, our Bible point for today is the Lord deserves our praise because He is, he is good, good and, and faithful. faithful. Yes. And our memory verse, so this will be an encouragement to you, is taken from Psalm 34, verse 4. And it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears right which radio can you say that again can you repeat that right. for again? psalm 34 verse 4 i sought the lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears may this verse remind you always that god is with you no matter what you're going through and may you always be comforted that god will deliver you and God will help you. So whenever a difficult situation comes, yes. remember this verse. Recall verse it. Remind just yourself. Pop yes. up, right? Because you have memorized it. You put it in your mind, and then it's going to be in your heart. And that when the real thing comes, the Lord will put it upon your heart and mind about His Word, because His Word is powerful. Right. So now let's take the time to reflect on what we've just heard and what we've just learned together, and let us be reminded of who our God is through this song. Psalm chapter 34 verses 8 to 10 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. As saints are God's children, we are commanded to love our God with all our heart, mind, and soul. We ought to honor and please Him always. He is good and He desires the best for us. Let us magnify the Lord and exalt His name together. He is worthy to be praised. His form and pride was saved from his trials. The angel of the Lord surrounds his saints and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that he is good. Blessed is he who trusts in him. Oh, taste and see that He is good, He is good, good to me. Fear the Lord, O oh, you His saints, because those who fear Him, they have no want. Young lions suffer hunger. But those who seek Him, let no good thing come, O oh, children, listen to me, I'll counsel you in the fear of Yahweh, which one of you wants to live a life that's rich and long and full of good? Keep your tongue from evil words, hold back your lips from speaking lies, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and go after it. Oh, taste and see that He is good, blessed is He. Who 
trust in Him. Oh, taste and see that He is good. He is good, good to me. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears listen for their cry. The face of the Lord is against the wicked. saints cry out, the Lord hears, He saves them out of all their trials. He's near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of His faithful but the Lord delivers them out of all. He preserves their bones. Not even one is broken. But sin will slay the wicked ones. Those who hate the saints will be condemned. The Lord redeems. His servant souls, and none of them will be condemned. Oh, taste and see that He is good. Blessed is He who trusts in Him. Oh, taste and see that He is good. He is good. Good to She just celebrated her birthday last Thursday. God bless you and keep you in His love and care. And now, we would like to ask Radiant Rocco, our Super Ambassador for Christ, to close us in prayer. Hi, Kid Lifers! Did you learn a lot? I sure did! You know it is important that we study the Word of God every day so that we will grow in the Lord and also get to know who God is and be able to talk about Him more to others just as we live out the Word of God. Now join me in prayer as we come to a close. Dear Lord, thank you for the life of Joshua and David. Joshua, even when things do not make sense, he still obeyed you. Help us to be like Joshua. Lord, thank you also for the life of David. Despite the trials he faced, he put his faith and confidence in you and you delivered him from his brokenness lord bless those who are sad and down right now those who are troubled and anxious with the pandemic situation that we face every day remind them lord that your grace peace comfort and strength will see them through keep us safe in your care till we meet again next sunday we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care, kid lifers. The Lord is our strength. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, Rocco, for closing us in prayers. So kids, always be reminded that God is with us. God is good. And God will answer us when we draw near and call on His name. So we pray that you learned something today. And we will see you again next week. Kids, hang in there, okay? Remember always that God looks out for us, okay? So keep hoping, keep praying, take care, till we see you again.